The Texas lineup has Brian Downing leading off a designated hitter. Rafael Palmero, Palmero at first base. Ruben Sierra in right field. Julio Franco at second. Ivan or, uh, Juan Gonzalez in center field. Steve Bouchelle at third. Dean Palmer in left. Mike Stanley catching. And Mario Diaz at short. The umpiring crew. Dan Morrison at home. Welke at first. Scott at second. And Evans, the crew chief, at third. Very quickly, the defense this afternoon for the Red Sox. Boggs at third, Rivera at short, Reed at second, and Vaughn at first. Left to right, Carlos Quintana gets to start in left field. Ellis Burks in center, Bronanski in right, Tony Payne behind the plate. And on the mound will be left-handed Kevin Morton. His last appearance was out of the bullpen, and that was in Minnesota. Two-thirds of an inning, three hits and two runs in that appearance. Last start was a loss, 11-3 to to Jack Morris and the Minnesota Twins. That was here at Fenway on July 18th. First man up for Texas to face Kevin Morton this afternoon is Brian Downing. He started last night's productive first inning with a single leading off the game against Joe Hesketh. There is a fastball inside ball one. And there's a strike cutting the inside corner. Texas Rangers have been tough on left-handed pitching a 17 and 11 record so far this season against lefties only three games over 500 against right-handed starters off speed pitch for ball two. his problem has been mislocation of the plate and getting behind on hitters first start after the productive one against the Tigers he walked Five batters in two innings, consequently getting in a lot of trouble. Two and two, the count to Downing. Downing with a 280 batting mark and 10 home runs. Warren has to be able to get the change up and the curveball over to make the fastball effective for him. If he has to just rely on the fastball, it's not going to work. He has to have control of the other two pitches. Off speed pitch and a strikeout. There's an idea right there. That's why his curveball was so much talked about before he got here to the Red Sox. A perfect curveball starting out around the letters and finishing around the ankles of Brian Downing. The Downing's down, and here's Palmero. Rafael Palmero, the first baseman. 333 average with a couple of hits last night. 15 home runs on the season and 49 batted in. Drops down, high foul, out of play. Well, Palmaro doesn't want to waste any time against the left-handed pitcher. The guy <laughs> drops down on the first pitch, but he's hacking. <laughs> Last year, Ready. he had almost 340 against left-handed. So as we mentioned, some games we've had against Texas. Doesn't matter much to him. Mm, didn't last night. Nothing in one. One ball, one strike. The breeze out of the northeast coming in a little bit this afternoon. It's uh, high cloudiness. They had predicted showers throughout the day, and who knows, but right now it doesn't look that bad. Here's a change-up belted foul, and it's one ball and two strikes. That may be doing Palmero a favor, throwing him a change-up. When you've dropped down a couple of times with fastball and curveball, and now you throw him a change-up, you're probably doing him a little bit of a favor. Can wait on it and slam it. He was out a little bit ahead of it. Now dropping down almost hit him. It did hit him. Morton comes down with the pitch that he drops down almost submarine. Definitely a sidearm pitch that tailed right back into the uniform and the body of Palmero. Third time this year, Palmero's been hit with a pitch, and that time he dropped down, tried to get the breaking ball to the outside part of the plate, just left it inside, and looked like it went right off the elbow somewhere in that vicinity. So there is one down and one on, and Sierra is up. Ruben Sierra, the right fielder, a switch hitter, hitting 307, 14 home runs, and 70 runs driven in. Fastball for a strike.
in the air to center field and Ellis Burks back in the starting lineup game knees and all makes the catch Joe Morgan was asking him this morning if he was able to play and he said well he said I've been playing with this pain for quite some time now so I might as well go out there and try it again taking aspirin to try to keep the swelling down before games and really a situation that I think even Morgan knew very much about till yesterday severe tendonitis apparently now I mean that's uh, according to Ellis that's his major league tendonitis that he's got in the knees there are two down and Franco is the batter Julio Franco a Red Sox wrecker over the years he's hitting 327 on the season with 10 home runs and 50 batted in the three years that he's been with the Texas Rangers hitting 427 against the Red Sox. Yep. Not only that, Mickey, but making some nice plays recently at second base against them. Good double play engineered last night with the bases loaded and a situational kind of play because Red Sox had a run could have made a run at the lead at that point got only one run out of it one ball and one strike to Franco to left center field back forward Burks over for Quintana and Carlos Quintana makes the put out for the final out and Morton escapes any kind of problems at all in the first inning besides just hitting a batter after a half inning no score Red Sox lineup has Wade Boggs back at third base leading off Jody Reed at second Carlos Quintana in left field Jack Clark the hitter Mo Vaughn at first Ellis Burks in center Tom Brunanski in right the catcher Tony Pena and at short Louis Rivera defense this afternoon for the Texas Rangers Steve Buschel at third base Mario Diaz is the shortstop Julio Franco at second and Rafael Palmero the first baseman left to right will be Dean Palma Juan Gonzalez and Ruben Sierra Mike Stanley gets to start this afternoon behind the plate and on the mound will be right handed Dennis oil can Boyd making his second start since joining the Texas Rangers and also his second start against the Boston Red Sox last time against Boston five innings six hits and two runs he walked three struck out four and lost that game two to one so boy who had come over here expecting to get a little more offense from this Texas ball club which was a problem from him in Montreal this year did not get it last time out but I'm sure as the season goes on he will get some of that offense that we have had a chance to see the last couple of times out with this Texas Ranger ball club. Yeah, he must have smiled a little bit last night when he saw this team jump quickly on left-hander Joe Hesketh for a three-run lead in the first inning. The can back at the, the mound where he spent six or seven years. Some stormy, some serene years. Leading and pitching on before a Boston crowd that will be interesting to see just how they react to him. Oil Can's record here at Fenway Park was 33 and 31 with a 4.11 ERA, two games over 500, and in his career he is 76 and 71. So he will landscape around the mound and face Wade Boggs back at third base, starting. Came off as a pinch hitter last night with his bad back, got a single. And stayed in to play an inning at third. Ball one. Boggs hitting 322. One and one. Well, Can's been very quiet since the team has been in town, refusing to do interviews and concentrating on the ball game today. He said no interviews before the game and maybe none after. <laughs> Of course, they're, they are leaving after as the Rangers take off. Rangers have a pretty good schedule coming up. They have about three weeks home and home against the lower clubs in the American League East. Milwaukee, 
Baltimore, Cleveland. So there's a chance to make some hay right now as the team is going hot. Waiting for pitchers to come back. Bobby Wood, of course, on a rehab schedule at Oklahoma City, came here last night. Bob serves one into right center for a base hit. Picked up by Sierra, and Boggs is on with a leadoff single. Well, last night when Boggs pinch hit a couple of times in that game and played some defense at third base, he was really struggling when he, especially when he got to first base after a hit, and you kind of wondered whether he would be back in the lineup today, but did not have a problem this morning taking batting practice, and right there in the curveball, Boyd ahead of him one and two, throws the curve, but Boggs right on it for the base hit. Jody Reed coming on had a rough night in last night's game. He's hitting 255 with a couple of homers. Breeze blowing in from center field. A northeast breeze. The lights are on at Fenway. It's slightly cloudy, but not ominously so right now. Heck of a lot better than it was supposed to be today. Yeah, it's supposed to be an all-day rain. A strike to Reed. A lot of pitches last time out for Oil Can against Boston. 97 pitches in the five innings of work that he had against the Red Sox. Yeah, it's a lot. A little bit drained, too, as he had to travel quite a bit after the trade to get to Texas. Right away, Bing, you're making a your start the next night against your former ball club. In 91 degree heat. Out of play. 0 and 2 to Reed. Temperature in the 70s and very pleasant right now as far as the temperature and the feeling is concerned. Can working to Reed. Reed is hit in three straight games going four for 14 including one home run. Watch out Cody. Got away from oil can the count is one ball and two strikes. 0-2, oh Oil Can trying to go inside with the fastball to move Reed off the plate up over his head, and Jody has to hit the deck. Very close to tipping his bat for a yeah. foul tip. <laughs> One and two. Popped up, back of the plate, Mike Stanley. Foul ball catch. One out. Good pitching there by Earl Can. He bounces right back after the high inside fastball with the curveball and really had Jody Reed hitting it right off the end of the bat for the pop up. Can showing so far that he's out here for business today just by the way he pitched to Jody Reed. Walks over now to talk to his shortstop, Diaz. Boyd will walk around, as you know, if you've seen him here. Go 30 feet back of the pitcher's mound and paw around a little bit. Carlos Quintana is up. And he is the left fielder today. It's only the fourth start or fifth time that he has started in left field. In the majors. Played right, of course, has a right fielder coming up. He played in left field the first time we saw him down in spring training. He played a lot of left field down at uh, Winter Haven. Yeah, first start for Quintana here at Fenway Park in left field. Yeah. Two balls and no strikes to the Q, who is hitting 293. Five for his last 26 times up. Boggs off first with one out. Another pop up in foul ground. Stanley chasing this one. Two out. So he fell behind Quintana and then got him to foul out. They're two away. 
Joe Morgan this morning was talking about how last night he felt the Red Sox hit has certainly helped out Guzman by swinging at a lot of bad pitches and there Quintana was in a situation ahead in the count two and oh and it looks like the pitch is not quite in the strike zone or a pitch that Quintana would like to drive it was toward the outside part of the plate looked to be a cut fastball and again the result to pop up to the catcher two away to Jack Clark. Clark the DH hitting 223 14 home runs 46 batted in and again that shift everybody over on the left side of the infield with the exception of the first baseman Texas is the only team now to do that against Clark that we have seen it to that extent three infielders on the left side the old Boudreaux shift in reverse Boudreaux of Cleveland did it against Ted Williams. The outfield is just about staying home though except for the center fielder Gonzalez maybe a step or two toward left center. Nothing in one. You would just like to be able to guide the ball to that hole at second base wide Boy. open spot but that's what they'd like you to do. Yeah take away some of the power he said can dribble a single through the right side but down the right field line he could get two certainly if he blooped one down the right side. There's a curveball by Oil Can, and it's one ball and one strike. Two outs in the bottom of the first. No score. Boggs is at first. Clark the batter. And a foul. Clark came on as a pinch hitter. And nubbed one in front of the plate and was thrown out by the catcher last night. Well, Cans dropped down now a couple of times on Clark and both times with the fastball. Let's see if he drops down ahead in the count now and goes with the breaking ball off the plate on the outside part of the plate. Stacked up in the infield on the left side against Clark. There it is. Good breaking pitch. See you later. Clark knew it. He's out. And the side's retired with one hit. And after one, there's no score. Second inning. Kevin Morton will go against Juan Gonzalez, Steve Bouchel, and Dean Palmer. Only one game in the American League this afternoon. The Tigers are at Minnesota. Tonight it's Oakland at New York. The A's come in here for two games starting tomorrow. Chicago is at Toronto and the Toronto Blue Jays facing tough Western clubs and losing lately. They lost five out of six. California at Cleveland. Kansas City at Milwaukee. And Baltimore at Seattle. Everybody uh, continues to lose while Toronto is losing. Nobody's made up any ground, particularly the Red Sox. Had a chance, everybody, to put a little bit of uh, less space between them and the Blue Jays. Blue Jays going into their first protracted sort of a dip for a while. But everybody else has been losing in the American League least. Juan Gonzalez. Big night last night with a couple of home runs. He has 16 on the year now. He leads the Texas club in homers. Hitting a solid 288. 69 runs batted in. Going to have to pop one right now with the wind blowing the way it is in toward home. To get any distance out of it toward left or center. Morton stings one inside. Ball two. You put these numbers up too in about 80 games. This is 81st start of the season. And the ball club has played 95 games, so missed a little time. Remember, he had that knee problem in spring training. He hits one deep toward left center field against that wind and into the net for a home run. 17 of them now and three in two days here. Juan Gonzalez wind my foot he said and split it and hit it into the net in left center. 
Last night, Gonzalez hit a home run on a fastball and then also one on a slider from Darrell Irvin. This time he gets the fastball from Morton, and again, he's able to extend his arms and really drive this ball into the screen to give the Rangers the one to nothing lead. Now, we saw a ball a little bit earlier held up because of the wind in center field, but that, that one just cut right through it and into the net. So it's one nothing Texas as the home run prevails again for the Rangers. The batter is Steve Bouchel, the third baseman with a strike. Bouchel has 15 home runs more than any other third baseman in the league and fouls the breaking pitch off his foot. Nothing and two to Bouchel. Ranger people. And those who have been watching him this year feel that this is the year that Bouchelle should be a candidate for the gold glove for third base. Only two errors all season long for Bouchelle at third, and on top of that, making some great plays. I mean, going to his backhand, ranging to his left. All right. Sometimes the statistics and the errors are a little bit deceiving because you have a guy that does not move very much. He's very <laughs> short handed, but does not really cover a lot of ground. Well, Bouchelle can do that. Nothing and two to Bouchel. Had to consider his foot for a minute after that. Looks at it high for ball one. Goes to right center field toward the triangle. Back goes Burks and at the point of the bullpen. With it for the out and a long way, about 400 feet for the out on Bouchelle. You know, we saw Elkan Boyd in the first inning on a 0-2 pitch bring one up and in on Jody Reed. And Kevin Morton is going to have to do the same thing against right-handed hitters. He's going to have to try to move them back off the plate. Now, that's going to make his other two pitches more effective. You let these guys extend their arms on the fastball, and we can see that they can hit the ball a long way. That was against the win, too. So you look at the flag, and you think it's going to be tough. But for the last two hitters, it hasn't been. Fastball for ball one on Dean Palmer, who had a home run last night into the Red Sox bullpen on a line. And Joe Morgan is coming out for a word with his young pitcher. Pena will join him. And nobody warming up in the Red Sox bullpen. This is something that Morgan obviously has on his mind that he would like to see Morton do and has not seen it so far in this game. Might be what you were just talking about, Jerry. Ball too much out over the plate. These guys can hang out over the plate, the right-handed hitters, and extend those arms. I mean, they're going to do a whole bunch of damage on you. So Lou Gorman, Ned, before we started this game, just before it started, he said that Jeff Gray right now is undergoing some tests at the hospital, and they're hoping that he will have some results within a couple of hours. Now a conversation with the home plate umpire, maybe over that last pitch. Getting a little bit uh, serious in the conversation. That's umpire or managers will do that. A couple of the better ones at it were Ralph Houck, Don Zimmer, and sometimes Daryl Johnson. They would wait for the umpire to come out and then give him de the devil. Yeah, well, it looked like, you know, if, if it goes where you have five or six pitches, all of a sudden you don't think you're getting a call, you'll see that kind of action. And really, that last pitch looked like it could have been a good one, but that's seemed to be the first one of the game that was even close that was not called. Home plate umpire is Dan Morrison. Two balls and no strikes to Palmer. And the breaking pitch is down low for ball three. There he's trying to get his curveball for a strike for a 2 0 strike and generally that's a pitch you would want to go to when you're ahead with a couple of strikes to try to get the strike out. Taking all the way for a strike three and one. Strike two. Got the high strike. 
three and two now. Line to left for a hit. Down to the corner. Being played off the wall by Quintana. The throw to second base, not in time. Little wide, and it's a double for Dean Palmer. So he uncorked on the 3 2 and drilled it to left field. A couple of the curveballs that Morton threw in the first inning were great curveballs. They really had a lot of break to him. Here, the 3 2 curveball just hangs up above the knee, and Palmer, almost like he was looking for that pitch, drives it down the left field line. Quintana plays it nicely off the base of the wall. But the throw's going to be just off the mark at second, and he'll have himself the double. Palmer, a 229 hitter, but with some power, had a home run last night. At second base with one out. Mike Stanley, the catcher, spelling Rodriguez, who caught last night's game. Day game after the night game, and Stanley gets the start. Ball one. He's hitting 233, has three home runs. Rangers lead 1 0 in the second. One ball and one strike. Rangers now going with three catches. Of course, Stanley, Rodriguez, who caught last night, and Petrali just recently off the disabled list. Of course, Stanley can play other places too. We've seen him at third base, play mm -hmm. some outfield. Inside for ball two. Kevin Morton on the mound for the Red Sox as a starter this afternoon. Tails outside with the off speed pitch. Ball three, three and one. Stanley bunched up toward right center field with Brunanski moved well over toward Ellis Burks. And another 3 2 count. Well, Morton has already shown you that it doesn't matter what the count is, he's going to stay with that curveball and the changeup. Good breaking curveball here to get a strike, maybe a little bit below the knees, but. Close enough. 3 2 pitch to Stanley. Goes to right, but foul. The Oakland A's come in tomorrow night. We'll have both games for you on Nesson at 7 35. Dana Kicker will get the start for Joe Morgan tomorrow against Dave Stewart. Roger Clemens was to have started against Joe Slusarski, starter not named for Thursday. And there is a strikeout. Stanley looking for something else, didn't get it, and he is called out on strikes. That Stanley confused that time. He threw him the curveball when it was three and one, then he came back with a fastball that Stanley was able to foul off, so he figures maybe I'll get another fastball. Nope, back with the curveball and takes it looking. Second strikeout for Morton. Now he faces Mario Diaz, the shortstop. Ball one. Diaz hitting 250 with a home run. Hits the ball. Dana Kicker just installed as a pitcher for tomorrow night. Gardner was to have started, but Kicker got some activity in the long Saturday game, the Saturday afternoon game, the losing pitcher in that one, and he will get a start tomorrow. They can move Gardner back from tomorrow to the next day on Thursday to face Luzarski. Three and zero. 
And that means Clemens will open up the series against the Toronto Blue Jays on Friday. So uh, Roger working with five days rest that time after the two long starts that he's had in the weather and everything else and a lot of a lot of pitches in each game getting an extra day. A walk to Diaz runners at first and second and Brian Downing at the plate. He struck out to open the game. Look at those home runs at Fenway. He has been tough. As a member of the California Angels first, now with the Texas Rangers. Tough against the Red Sox and a Fenway Park hitter. Ball one. So again, Downing has that right foot right up on the line, close to the plate, but today he looks like he's even more open than we're accustomed to seeing. But notice, as soon as the pitch is made, he'll bring that left foot right back into a good hitting position. Hitters like to do that, a lot of them, to, to get a better look at the ball and a look at the breaking pitch when they open up some. Yeah, the guys that get in trouble are the guys that don't bring that foot back in, facing yeah. square off with the pitcher. Some guys will have that open stance and almost step in that same direction. They become very vulnerable outside corner, outside part of the plate. Al Simmons, a great hitter, a Hall of Famer with Philadelphia Athletics and later on the White Sox. Did not start off that way, but he finished that way. And everybody wondered how he could hit 380, which he did a couple of times, and step in the bucket. He was just so strong. He covered the outside of the plate, but he had a stance, a step that went away from the pitch. The greatest bucket hitters of all time, of course, Roberto Clemente had that foot in the bucket all the time, but everything else was out hanging over the plate. Yep. Two and nothing, the count to Downing. Three and zero. This is not what they want to see Morton doing. He's had two three and one counts, but that developed into three and two. On three and two, Palmer doubled, and Stanley struck out. Tony may be dealing with the green light in this situation, even though he's thrown quite a few balls in a row. They know with that right-handed hitter here at Fenway Park. Hey, you get a fastball three zero, you can drive. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> not much of a wind blowing right now. Quintana near the line in left field. He's gone for it all right, but he fouls it over everything in left. <laughs> Talk about being geared up for the cheese. Certainly Downing was on the 3-0 count because it was the fastball from Morton and how far out in front Downing was of that pitch. He jumped it. Three and one. Two on, two out. Texas leading one nothing. Downing will make Morton wait. Off speed, strike two in the third straight. Three and two count. And Downing wanted no part of that one. Three state uh, three three and two counts in the last four batters. He did walk Diaz in between. So the runners will take off. High drive but foul left field way again and over everything. That'll hit the roof. The runners could have trotted if that ball had been straightened out. Three and two to Brian Downing. A long look and too long for Downing will back out. Outfield in a strange position on Downing with Quintana way over toward the line. The hole is in left center field. Runners go and it is popped up. Coming forward is Vaughn in foul ground and 
has it for the out and Morton gets out without further damage he does give up a home run and the Rangers after an inning and a half have a one nothing lead. Bottom of the second Texas leading one nothing. Not much else can happen to the Red Sox I guess if you were ta hearing us talk about Jeff Gray and you came in late Gray was taken to the hospital in a hurry before the game as he slumped over in his bench after taking a workout had some numbness on the right side and the paramedics came over he's undergoing tests now at the hospital Mo Vaughn is up oil can Boyd's pitch in there for a strike at the time that he did leave though Jeff Gray was uh, was, was aware of what was happening. He did not pass out. One ball and one strike and Lou Gorman said there was something that Jeff had told him had happened in 10 years or so ago when he was in college. So he's having the test now. We certainly hope everything is all right with Jeff. Vaughn looks outside. The count is two and one. Last time the Red Sox faced Earl Can Boyd, Joe Morgan did not want to play Mo Vaughn in that game down in Texas. Felt like all the off-speed stuff that he was going to see from Boyd would kind of mess him up some. He's swinging the bat a little bit better right now with Mo, so gets the chance to start today against Earl Can. Last night he swung the bat very well, got a base hit and two line drives. Or a line drive and a hard grounder. Pops this one up. Down into foul ground and Bouchelle over with it for the out. Tracks it down right near that railing and Vaughn is out. The well, lady was on that fastball from Oil Can. He saw all off speed pitches prior to that and when he did get the fastball from Boyd. He was late with the swing plus the pitches up. That led a high right there to Mo Vaughn and Bouchelle will do the honors. One out in the Red Sox second. Ellis Burks. Batting in the sixth spot. Batting 242. 12 home runs. And it's a ball. He's batting against a very good friend of his. They, Burks and Boyd were very close when Oil Can was in Boston. Not close here, though. He rifles one foul off the wall. Burks keel hauled one but just foul a long loud strike with Ken came off the mound and he's shaking his head up and down like yes I knew it was going to be foul all the way <laughs> Didn't have much of a chance to Ellis, do anything Ellis Burks right down the line and just going to the left of that foul pole one ball and one strike Side ball two, two and one. Three and one. Burks appeared as a pinch hitter last night on 0 for 1. He's had he has hit in six of his last seven games. Here goes one. That's going to tie up the game. Way back. Home run, Burks. Over everything and left. So the foul ball was no fluke. This time Ellis got all of it and delivered it for his 15th, his 13th home run. Not fooled at all by the drop down delivery of oil can. He went with the fastball from the side on position and Brooks all over it. I tell you the last few games Ellis has really been swinging the bat much much better. Tom Brunanski takes ball one. Hans reaction on that one he said yep. My buddy did it to me. 
Inside again to Bruno, ball two. The eighth home run for Burks here at Fenway Park. That ties him with clock for Fenway Park home runs. Bernanski has the most at Fenway with nine. Two and one to Bernanski, who is hitting 210 with 12 home runs and 48 runs driven in. Little wrinkle on that one for strike two. Three balls, two strikes. Got him. Renanski down swinging for the second strikeout for Oil Can. Excellent location with that pitch by Olkan. It looked like it might have been some type of cut fastball working down and away from Bernanski. Got the strikeout against Clock with the curveball, and that time the what I believe to be the cut fastball. Tony Pena looking at a strike. Pena hitting 241. Four hits in his last 33 times up. One and one. Morgan was thinking about giving Payne the afternoon off after the game last night, but Tony came to the ballpark prepared to play. <laughs> it's on the outside corner. Pulled in a little bit by Stanley. One ball and two strikes. Two outs in the second inning and a tie game 1 1. Gonzalez a homer for Texas. Burks a homer for Boston. Didn't get the corner. Two and two. Field pushed well around toward right on Pena. They give him all of the left field line. Two and two still. Pena leads American League catches and games caught. 87 games he has appeared in, now 88. And 87 of those have been starts. Down is short. Nice stop. And a play by Diaz. Almost took him into left center, but he stayed with it, throwing from the ground, and gets Pena on a splendid play. And after two innings, it's tied up 1 1. All right, then we got the scores and happenings. As Tom Larson, you have given them to you. Here it is a 2 to 1 ball game. Texas leading on a homer and a balk. And oil can Boyd goes to work on Louis Rivera. Rivera, the shortstop, batting in the number nine spot and hitting 288. Six home runs, 26 batted in. Ball one. Louis had four hits in his last nine times up. Ball two.
Two balls and one strike to Louis. No change this afternoon for Oil Cam Boyd. It doesn't appear. It looks like he just has that blue T-shirt on underneath the uniform and don't seem to see any jewelry <laughs> flying around. He did have it on down in Texas when he faced the Red Sox last time. Yeah, had a couple of double strands out there. Two and one to Rivera. Three and one. Been talking to uh, Royal Ken's father-in-law before the game down in the parking lot. He was here. Is he Ramos? And he says, I think that Dennis has finally cooled it. Calmed down some. He said, I couldn't understand him when I first came into my house. He said, <laughs> he, said he got upset about everything. Three balls and two strikes. And a walk to Rivera starting the inning off. First walk given up by the can. Walked three last time against the Red Sox. And first walk, as you mentioned, out of this ball game here today. One thing the trademark of Oil Can throughout his career has been his excellent control. Sometimes maybe even too good. Yeah. Give up the home run ball. Wade Boggs single to right center in the first inning. I think that whole experience for Oil Can in Montreal was a very pleasant experience for him. He got out of a little of the heat. As far as publicity is concerned, which he got in the American League East, going to places of being in Boston, of course, in the first place, and then pitching in New York and everything kind of grouped in the East Coast. But you get up to Montreal, and sometimes people forget about you. One ball and no strikes. Rivera off first. And Can's having trouble with his control. Fenway averages looks where Boggs is behind number nine. Three different years over 400 here. Ted Williams, 428, the best over his lifetime. Of course, Ted Williams hit good <laughs> well everywhere. Three and nothing to Boggs. Three balls, one strike. Well, they keep asking Boggs in the offseason if he'd like to play somewhere else. You know, he said, are you kidding? I'd love to finish my career in Boston, and why not? When you have numbers like that at your home ballpark where you're going to play half your games, I would, ha I would imagine you'd be very happy. He walks, and two walks in a row put Oil Can Boyd in some trouble. Nobody out. Bobby Valentine making a trip to the mound to talk with Boyd. I notice that Valentine does make most of the trips to the mound to talk to the pitches without the cost of the game. Tom House, the pitching coach, or he's seldom out to the mound, but Valentine has something on his mind and he'd like to get it out himself. His pitching staff throughout the season leads the league in walks. They've walked more hitters than any other team. They've also allowed more home runs than any other ball club in the American League. What Valentine does not want to see is Ken uh, walking people. He doesn't usually do that and get behind and put some people on base where you get the one blow into the screen and changes the game around. Jody Reed will be the hitter. Talking about Fenway Park and left handed batters who really did not want to leave. Fred Lynn comes to mind. And you try to. Uh, project the numbers that he might have had in his whole career here in this ballpark because he used it beautifully. I've always believed Ned, that the left handed hitter makes you a better hitter because of that wall you stay on the ball longer you point your shoulder out toward the pitcher toward the wall and you can go to the other way and get some hits. Throw down a second on the butt show and it's safe at second base Rivera one ball and no strikes squaring around a bunt with Jody Reed. Taking ball one. One of the toughest plays for the runner at second base. You see a strike, what you think is going to be a strike, so you try to get the extra couple of steps before the ball is bunted. And a lot of times, especially a ball that's right down the middle that's bunted at by a bunter, 
Very tough to tell if it goes through, and you've got to really bust your tail to get back to second. Palmero close at first. Bouchelle close at third, and the bluff towards second. Diaz coming in toward the bag behind Rivera. Franco is playing about halfway at second base. In about halfway. There is daylight showing at second. Rivera holding. Diaz had already stepped on the bag, but Boyd holds on to the ball. One of the best things to do for a hitter in that situation, if you see that shortstop break over for a pickoff, just try to talk time out. You know, the umpire called time, and I will eliminate that play. Sometime they'll call it, sometime they won't. One ball and no strikes. Diaz with a bluff. The runners go, and it's fouled on the hit and run. So they had Reed cutting, and the runners going on that count. Expecting that Boyd would throw a strike in that situation behind one ball and no strikes. Well, I think that ball was probably down and in on Jody Reed. Not a strike, but he's forced to swing at it because they had the play on. They went from the bunt to the hit and run. Now back to one and one. Maybe they'll go back to the bunt. Diaz conferring with Bouchelle now at third as to how they want to play. Bouchelle is still in. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. Looking for the bunt. They've got one caught between second and third. Safe at third base. Rivera gets third. The throw going to second as he was breaking instead of going to third base while they would have nailed him. And a late throw and a late tag. And Rivera gets to third. Because Rivera was picked off by so much, it works into his favor. That throw right there, back to second base. Once Rivera sees that, his only option is to go to third base. He'll go to the head for a slide and just about beat it. The only other option the catcher had would be to run directly at Rivera. Once he faked that throw, run directly at him and try to get him going back towards second and then make the throw. A break right there for the Red Sox. It'll be a fielder's choice for Rivera to get the third. And runners are at first and third now. And the count is two and one to Jody Reed. Now the infield moves back to double play depth. Fouled off. Two and two. Boggs, of course, has to remain at first because that throw went through to second base. There's no way he can take off and go. His only other option once the throw goes to third to take off, but you don't want to take that chance. Oof. One more, one more hand fake or bluff by Stanley, and he could have seen that Rivera was committed to third base and could have thrown there. Two balls and two strikes. Ooh, just outside. Ball three. Yeah, his only other option that would have been to fake that throw and maybe take five or six steps toward the infield to freeze Rivera at some point and get him heading back into second base. A full count to Reed. Runners at first and third. He walks Reed and Oil Can has walked the ballpark. Reed to first, Boggs to second. Rivera is at third and that's something unheard of. You hardly ever have seen that with Boyd walking three hitters in a row. Got to make him pay for this. Base is loaded all because of the walk. You catch a break by having Rivera safe at third base. You've got to put some big runs on the board in this inning. Something the Red Sox have not been able to do. Take advantage of mistakes and really have a big inning. Carlos Quintana is the batter. He fouled to the catcher in the first inning. Red Sox with a big threat here. Ball one. There'll be some activity now in the Texas bullpen. It'll take a wild guess and say it's Rosenthal. <laughs> He's always <laughs> He's the, the first, first one, one up. up. Yeah. Pitches, pitches whole game. Wayne Rosenthal. The 1 0 delivery. Drops down and a foul ball. Just foul of third. Ball hit hard by Quintana. 
That pitch so far today has not worked for Oil Can because when he drops down, he's leaving the ball from the middle of the plate in. And that really works into the power of the right-handed hitter. There's a slight bail when a guy drops down, and you're working into his wheelhouse when you leave it in that vicinity. You want to try to get that pitch to the outside part of the plate. That's the one that Burks hit the home run on. Wayne Rosenthal busy in the bullpen. Three on, nobody out. Bottom of the third, and Texas with a 2-1 lead. Boyd to Quintana. Long drive, left field. Up she goes, and it's a grand slam for Quintana. The numbers on the board as everybody's calling Q, Q, Q. First career grand slam. And the Red Sox lead 5-2. to two. Also, Quintana's first home run here at Fenway Park since last year. His last home run was against Chicago last July 30th. Exactly a, a year to the day. Quintana lifting the breaking ball into the net. And yes, the Red Sox made Boy pay for the walks. Those walks will kill you eventually. Three of them did. It's amazing. A year ago today, his last Fenway homer. <laughs> Here's Clark. And Boyd throws low. Five to two, Red Sox lead on a grand slam by Carlos Quintana. One hit, four runs. And a rip by Clark. <laughs> Eredino had to do some quick work to duck out of the way of that line drive. Three grand slams by the Red Sox this year. The man at the plate, Jack Clark, had one on opening day in Toronto. And Kevin Romine had one in Comiskey Park earlier in the year in May. There's a strike, and the count is two and two. Clark rams it into left field for a hit. It's covered by Palmer, and Clark will hold with a long single. As he hit a hanger down into left field, and they are running at the can now. And the day may be quickly over for Oil Can Boyd when he's not walking people. Now the Red Sox are hitting the ball very hard off Oil Can. Jack Clark having hits cuts on the curve ball. Not a bad curve ball. It was away from Clark, but he's still able to extend the arms and line it into left field for the base hit. Mo Vaughn. Strike one. Vaughn fouled to third base in the second. High fly ball, center field. And Gonzalez with it for the first out of the inning. And again, Oil Can got away with one that time. Something off speed. It was up in the strike zone, but popped up by Vaughn to center field. A little conversation now with Stanley and Oil Can and trying to get him calmed down. Quintana, with the bases loaded this year, now is four for 12 and 11 runs batted in. So he's made the hits count. There's one out, and Ellis Burks comes up. He had a home run in the second. Strike one.
One and one to Ellis. A couple of areas now that have hurt the Red Sox obviously taking advantage of the bases loaded situation getting the big runs big inning and then when they get the big inning continuing on throughout the ball game to put the other team away. Two and one. You got Boyd laboring out there. He walked Rivera, Boggs, and Reed, and then gave the grand slam to Quintana. A hard single to Clark. And an outfield out to Vaughn. Strike two. Two and two. Hit up the middle. Burks gets his second hit. Clark goes to second. Bobby Valentine keeps taking one step up the steps. Now two. Here he comes to make the pitching change in this inning. Not fooling the Red Sox hitters with anything right now. He tried to throw the fastball by Brooks that time with the two strike count, but Brooks right on it for the base hit up the middle. So Boyd will get an early exit in this ball game. Wayne Rosenthal is warm in the bullpen. Rosenthal worked in one of the games the Red Sox played down in Texas. The last game he picked up oil can Boyd in that one and three fine innings for him. A one hit no runs. Did not walk anybody and struck out four Red Sox hitters. Overall for Rosenthal his 12th appearance. A record of one and one with a 2.93 ERA. 11 hits in 15 in the third innings. Big strikeout numbers 18 and he's walked 10. Allowed one home run. Opponents hitting only 183 off Rosenthal. Tremendous performance out there by him. In that game that eventually the Red Sox won but. They couldn't get anything off Rosenthal. So the game that Doyle can Boyd probably wanted more than ever the one in Fenway Park to do well in. He did not he just uh, he was all over the place with his control he was behind batters. 68 pitches in two and a third innings is a lot of pitches. Hammered for a couple of home runs including a deadly grand slam after three walks. Onesta is the place to get the latest in sports news and highlights. You can find it all on Sports Desk, the morning edition, every weekday morning from 5 to 9 a.m. Host Amy Stone makes sure you get all the news you need to start your day, as well as a look at the highlights, including the late games from the West Coast. Make sure to start your day off right with Sports Desk, only on Nesson. Rosenthal working to Brunanski. One out in the third. A breaking pitch for a strike. Boyd struck out Brunanski in the second one of uh, oil cans two strikeouts. One ball one strike Red Sox leading five two with four runs here in the third. Ball two. And a three one count. A little fly ball to center and a run for Gonzalez. He will throw to third base, but not in time. He hesitated a little. Otherwise, he could have had a force, maybe. It dropped in front of him. And the runner at second base 
Clark had to uh, cut a hold, got a late break, but beat the throw in there, so it's a base hit loading the bases again. Dallas did not get a good jump on this ball right off the end of the bat for Bernanski. It kind of froze him in center field. By the time he started to charge it, clock's about halfway. Not quite sure if he's going to catch it or not. Now a little double clutch by Gonzalez right here is really going to cost him the force play at third base. He was thinking about going to second. By the time he went to third, it's too late. Yeah, if he's thrown right away, he had a very good chance on nailing Clark for a force out. Now the base is loaded for the second time in the inning, and Tony Pena is the batter. Strike one. Slider. Pena grounded to shortstop on a fine play by Diaz. That came in the second inning. Tony's the ninth man up this inning. One and one. Once again, another one of those situations where you can tack a few more runs on in the inning and in the game and really take some of the pressure off yourself, the pitcher, and your defense. One ball, one strike. Tony rams it to the wall in left. Clark scores. Burke scores. The throw toward third, not in time. It's a double. And it's a 7 to 2 game. Tony Pena rams one against the wall for two runs. A lot of the long ones today, the hard hit balls have been hit on breaking pitches, and no exception here with Pena. He gets a curveball from Rosenthal and just rifles it off the wall. A couple of runs come in to score. Bernanski heading all the way to third, very close play at third, but slides underneath the throw and the tag. Well, the Red Sox have batted around and scored six runs in the third. All six runs charged to Oil Can Boy. The infield is in now. And Rivera, who started this whole inning, is up again. He takes a strike. Louis drew a walk and scored the first run of the inning. So Rosenthal, so far, has left a lot of his game in the bullpen, at least for now. A loop single to center by Bruno, and then a hard double toward the wall by Pena. Almost hits Rivera. One ball and one strike. Infield tight in on the grass, trying to stop further bleeding. shoulder or the wrist bothering Rivera but again he goes to hold up his swing and just completely drops the bat Bernanski at third and Pena at second one out Two and one. Three and one it was, and he walks Rivera for the third time, loading the bases in this inning. A strange pitch there. The number nine hitter at the plate. He goes to some type of breaking ball on the 3-1 count to Rivera. Now he's got the bases loaded with Boggs at the plate. So it's a long afternoon for Bobby Valentine right now. Red Sox lead by five runs, 7-2, to two, and they're still batting here in the third. Boggs has a single and a walk. Ball one. Stanley looks at the bench and goes out now there's left-handed action in the bullpen for Texas it may be Jeffcoat who's starting to loosen up for the Texas Rangers Mike Jeffcoat it is two for two for Boggs this year with the bases loaded to go along with a six RBI couple of sacrifice flies 
There have been four walks by Texas pitchers this inning. And the count jumps to two and nothing to Boggs. All the seven runs are the responsibility of Oil Can Boyd. Base hit, right field. One run scores. Two runs score. Nine to two. Wade Boggs with a two run single. And the beat goes on here. Something very different for Wade Boggs that time up. He really hooks the wrist and pulls the ball by Franco at second base. Watch how those wrists of Boggs will roll over now and pull the ball. That ball's tailing away from him, almost like he had his mind made up he was going to try to pull. Sierra will overrun the ball right here, allowing Rivera to go on to third base. Make it hurt, I guess they did. <laughs> so now it is a 9-2 to game and a tremendously productive inning for Boston. A big hit, a grand slam by Quintana. Jody Reed is up. He walked and scored earlier in the inning. One ball and one strike. Boggs continues to be perfect in bases loaded situations this year. Yeah. Three for three. Not too shabby. Runners at first and third. And Reed looks at a strike. One and two. Rosenthal has come in and given up three hits and a walk. Has been charged now with two runs. Two balls, two strikes. Worked a couple of days ago against Detroit, and in that game, an inning in a third for Rosenthal. Doesn't look like the same guy that we saw down in Texas <laughs> the last game of that series. And Reed goes down swinging. That's the second out of the inning, and the first registered by Rosenthal. Bringing up Quintana. Quintana fouled out in the first and had a grand slam in this, the third inning. His first time up, he's up again with runners at first and third. Rounded first base, saw the ball settled in the neck, clapped his hands, and went joyously around the bases. One ball and no strikes. Here is a strike. One and one. Thirteenth batter to face Texas pitching in this inning. Strike two. Maybe a long afternoon for Morgan, but a pleasant one right now. His team leading by seven runs. He hasn't had an inning like this this year. I think it's the biggest of the year for Boston. Eight runs. There's a slam into right field. It's going to be nine runs, maybe more. Boggs heading around third base and headed for home. He will score a two-run double for Quintana. Murder, he wrote. How about this inning for Quintana? Six RBIs, a home run, and a double all in the same inning here in the third. And that's some good hitting. He just hits a grand slam home run last time up by pulling the ball. Now with the 
two strikes goes right back to the opposite field pulls the hands in drives the ball the other way and picks up a couple of more 11 to 2 Quintana <laughs> six runs driven in in the third inning and a 10 run inning for Boston the pitch is outside to Clark who has singled in this inning and scored he's one for two six RBI in a game a career high for Quintana he's done in one inning <laughs> It's been a while since the Red Sox have had a blowout. Their way. One ball and one strike. And high foul ball back of the plate. Caught by Stanley and the long inning is over for Texas pitching. They give up 10 runs. The Red Sox lead after three, 11 to two. Steve Lyons has gone into play center field for the Red Sox. We move to the top of the seventh with the Red Sox leading 11 to two. Lyons replacing the knees of Alex Burks. Who ended up with a three for four afternoon? Here's what Kevin Morton has done as he has this nine run lead. He has gave up runs, single runs in the second and third, but has pitched very steadily since, giving up six hits, striking out four, walking three. Top of the order up for Texas, Brian Downing. He's 0 for three. Foul back here. And off speed, the change is high. Ball one. One ball and one strike. Try it again, miss again, ball two. Three and one. Palmero on deck. Three balls, two strikes. Well, the White Sox continued their home run binge last night up in Toronto. Four home runs in that game, so they leave Fenway Park getting home runs and they move right up to the Sky Dome and continue. They're really playing well now. Downing slams one foul into that crowd on the point. Still three and two. The other way, still three and two. What the Texas Rangers have to do is try to get their pitching in order and back and healthy and a solid rotation going into this stretch when they play the, the lesser lights of the American League East, Cleveland, Baltimore, and Milwaukee, home on home series. Fly ball may be some trouble, but it's slicing and it's going to be in there for a home run. Inside the pole, Pesky's pole in right field, and a home run for Brian Downing, his 11th. It looked like the thing is going to go foul, but it it went into the stands right behind the pole. Also looked like from here that a fan reached out and caught the ball out over the fence. We'll have to take another look at it on the replay, but once again, right down in that short corner, right down the right field line. Ball away from Downing slaps it down. I watch the fan. See, it almost looks like he reaches out over the fence to make the catch, but maybe it would have landed right on top of the fence. Bernanski over there to watch it, and ball right at the top of the fence. I think it was where the ball was handled. So it's a home run for Downing that travels about 280 feet, and it's 11 to three. There's a shot that's going down into that same territory in a line, and they've got. 
The ball into the stands again, and another home run to right field. Palmero lining a home run about the same spot as Downing, and how often will you see that? Back-to-back -back homers around that right field foul pole. That was hit with more authority than Downing's was. It's now 11-4. to four. Downing's a fly ball down in that area, and Palmero with the line shot down that right field line, finding his way into the stands for the home run. <laughs> wow. That is something. No question about this one being in the stand. It's going to hit a fan and just kind of rattle around for a while. The other one, a little bit questionable in my mind whether it was in the stands or not. Almost the same spot. Bill Fisher coming out to uh, slow things down for Kevin Morton, who was breezing with an 11 to 2 lead. Now it's 11 to 4. Those home runs, both solo jobs, leading off the seventh inning. Downing's 11th and Palmero's 16th. Dennis Lamp in the bullpen for Boston. 50th RBI for Palmero. 16 home runs, two for Palmero. That's two more now than he's had throughout his career. His career high coming in was 14. He'd done that twice, but he is rapidly becoming a long ball threat now for the Texas Rangers. Boy, he drilled that. Fisher's had his word. Four runs and eight hits now for the Rangers. They trail by seven. A lot of pitches, too, for Morton in this game. Over 100 pitches coming into this inning. Most of those, a lot of those, very early in the game, the first three innings. Kevin Reimer is the batter, getting his first at bat. Came into the game just a in half inning ago, playing right field in place of Sierra. Pops up the pitch. Left center field. Lions coming on in a hurry and finally making the catch. Kind of a slow start and indecisive by whether it was going to be Rivera. Quintana or Lyons who had the farthest way to go. He's playing deep for Reimer, the left-handed hitter, and he, as he started to run in, he looked toward the infield whether he's going to get any help there at all. There was no help from the infield, so now he's going to go all out to make the catch. Quintana was also playing deep and a long way for him to go. <laughs> so there's one out, and Julio Franco is up. He's 0 for 3. One ball, no strikes. Top of the seventh inning, Red Sox leading 11 to 4. And bicycle riding by Franco, 2 and 0. 99 home runs now for the Texas Rangers on the season with the three hit today. <laughs> All of them solo jobs. This is a Fenway afternoon. Fastball outside, ball three. Three and zero to Franco. Gonzalez on deck. It's Detroit still leading in that department. 131 home runs in 98 games for the Detroit Tigers. Three and one. That and that alone has kept the Tigers up there. Although their bullpen for a while had a good stretch early in the season, but it hasn't been the pitching is getting five or six runs a game. A walk to Franco, and Joe Morgan comes out with a hook. That will be all for Kevin Morton, as Morgan will relieve him now with Dennis Lamp. One out, two runs in in the seventh inning, and the Red Sox with an 11 to 4 lead. So the rookie Kevin Morton will leave, and the veteran Dennis Lamp will come on for him in a wild and woolly one from Fenway this afternoon. Red Sox changes in the top of the eighth inning. Mike Brumley, who ran for Rivera, takes the shortstop position over. Brumley at short and John Marzano spelling Pena behind the plate now for the last couple of innings. Marzano catching. Red Sox leading 11 to 4. Marzano was funny before the game today. He was checking with Pena to see how Pena felt. He was hoping he was tired so Marzano would get a chance to start. <laughs> Back up catcher, you figure those day games after a night game, you might get your opportunity. And he said he once he saw Pena walk in the clubhouse smiling, he knew he was going to be back on the bench. <laughs> 
can be a long time for a backup, particularly if you're backing up Tony Pena, who expects to play all the time. Palmer lifts a high foul, and that's going to be out of play. Dean Palmer has alternated between left field and third base and back to left again today. Has two hits, a single and a double. Facing Dennis Lamp, who retired the two batters he faced in the seventh inning. One and two. Out of play. Into the seventh at Minnesota with the Twins leading the Tigers eight to five. Two balls, two strikes. Count hangs that way, two and two. The Rangers leave tonight, and the Oakland A's come in tomorrow. Two games with the A's. And a weekend series with Toronto. Struck him out. Lamp gets his second K. Look out Pettis with the fastball. This time to the right hand of Palmer. He goes to the slider down and away. Palmer really sets his weight back on that back foot and has the transfer of the weight to the front foot. Very much like a lot of the Chicago White Sox hitters. Batter is Mike Stanley. Ball one. Texas catcher is one for three, had an infield hit in the fourth inning. One and one. Rangers move on to Chicago. Kevin Brown will get the start there against an undecided pitcher on Wednesday night. On Thursday, Bobby Witt will be off to the Sable list after a couple of rehab starts at Oklahoma City. He'll face Ramon Garcia. Lofted out of play. This game is uh, just about three hours old. It's in the top of the eighth inning, and the Red Sox have one inning to show for it. A 10 run third inning as they lead 11 to 4. Two and two. So they get some good news with Witt coming off the DL, and I'm sure they're still waiting to find out about the examination of. Nolan Ryan get those two people back for this stretch against the weaker teams and they have to hang in there that ball hit pretty well to left center field Lions over and it is off the wall past Lions backed up in left field by Quintana it's a double for Mike Stanley a couple of hits for Stanley in the game had a single back in the fourth inning and now the double about halfway up the wall pretty nice job by Quintana now he has not played left field here at Fenway Park but he knows how to play the wall or at least back up Lions gets tied in close to the wall thinking he may have a chance to catch this it's by him but the big cues on the move to back it up first hit given up by Lamp he works now to Diaz who pops up the first pitch and Jody Reed is back Two outs. Diaz 0 for 3. Brian Downing 1 for 4. Fly ball home run inside the right field foul pole his last time up in the seventh. It's 11th home run of the season. And there's a base hit to center field. Stanley at third and he will come on to score. It's 11 to 5. Two out single by Brian Downing. Knocks in his 32nd run of the season. And it's a six run game. 
Downing is generally going to do something against the Red Sox and especially here at Fenway Park and he waited late in the game today to do it the seventh and eighth the home run back in the seventh right down that right field line and now base set up the middle to drive in a run and make the score eleven to five. Downing you can pretty much count on him getting a couple of hits to oh. plays the Red Sox and especially here at Fenway. He's done it all his career with California and now with the White Sox. Palmero lined a homer behind Downings right in the same spot in around the foul pole in right field in the seventh. He is one for two. He's been hit by a pitch and walked. Two balls, no strikes. And a three nothing count. Kevin Reimer on deck. Rangers have 10 hits in this game but trail by six runs. They've been piling up the hits and the runs over the last three or four games. Ball four and they've got two base runners. Palmero walks downing to second. Look out at the Red Sox bullpen. They have Fossus available. Of course kicker is going to be working in the game tomorrow night against Oakland. Darrell Irvin threw last night and the close of Jeff Reardon. Joe Morgan does not want to think about getting that far. <laughs> he has a six run lead in the eighth inning. Reimer is the batter up for the second time. He flied to shallow center in the seventh. And he drills one into center field for a hit. And that'll score a run. Downing coming across and Palmero going to third. It's 11 to 6. Well, that's quickly going to get Foster's up in the bullpen. All of a sudden, you're back in a game now that's 11 to 6, and you want to have that walk away victory, especially where the things have gone for the Red Sox, and you start to get a little bit nervous when a few more runs are added here late in the game. Gino Petrali will be the batter. That ball sharply hit that time by Reimer, who's been excellent at coming off the bench for the Rangers. So he gets an RBI. And that is the 11th Ranger hit on their sixth run. Ordinarily, you'd say, well, I guess they're winning the ball game. They've got 11 hits and six runs, but they're down by five. Red Sox climbing on oil can Boyd early, knocking him out and continuing against his successor, Rosenthal, in that big third inning. Tony Fossis in the bullpen. Gino Petrali. Came on to play third base in the seventh. Just off the disabled list and he is batting in Franco's spot. Fouls right off himself. And it's one strike. Runners at first and third. Reimer at first, Palmyro at third. Petrali hitting 468 here at Fenway Park starting back from 1989. He was on the DL with a lower back problem a disc problem. Lamp carves him up inside on that one and it's 0 and 2. 348 career average against Boston. Not too shabby. Five homers. Strikes him out. Works him inside and gets the strikeout with two men on base. Rangers come up with a couple of runs in the eighth. And at the end of seven and a half, it's the Red Sox 11 and the Rangers six. 
This copyrighted program is brought to you under pay cable TV rights granted by the Boston Red Sox solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the accounts and descriptions of this game without the written consent of the New England Sports Network and the Boston Red Sox is prohibited. Bobby Valentine has another pitcher in this ball game, left-hander Mike Jeffcoat. Jeffcoat worked in that series down at Arlington. The second game of the series, he picked up Nolan Ryan. Pitched two-thirds of an inning, no hits and no runs. Walked one, struck out one. He eventually gave way to Gossage, who picked up his first save of the year in that game. Overall for Jeffcoat, very busy. 46 appearances. That'll put him about fifth in the league in that department. Four and two with a 3.60 ERA. High batting average, 306 against Jeffcoat. 60 hits and 50 innings. Carlos Quintana is the batter. Take his performance out of there today, and the Rangers would be leading 6-5. to five. Carlos has knocked in six runs with a grand slam and a double. Hits it deep towards center field. Pettis chasing way back, and he's there with a basket catch in the triangle. A long shot by the cue, but Gary Pettis catching up with it. 32 great plays in this game by Gary Pettis in center field. Did not even start the game. He made a jumping catch against the wall a few innings ago, and now going back toward that Red Sox bullpen. Started in, then had to quickly go back, and he makes the basket catch. A Gary Pettis kind of a performance. Two great catches, two strikeouts. Jack Clark is up and taking a ball. He's one for four, singled and scored in the third. He was up twice in that inning, went one for two. Right by him for a strike. Brad Arnsberg worked one inning in relief and gave up no runs, no hits, walked one. Twins have added a run. They lead nine to five over the Tigers through seven. Off speed and a strike. One and two to Clark. With a crowd on Clark just on about every pitch. Yep. They have the Clark shift again with Diaz, the second baseman, over on the left side of the infield. Strike three. Clark knew it. He is called out on strikes. Now they're two away. Once again, the Blues will start as Clark heads back toward the Red Sox. I got second time today. He is struck out. Strikeouts 88 and 89 on the season. Back to a breaking ball by Jeff Coat. Picks up the outside corner. So Clark is out, and Vaughn is up. Mo is one for three. One ball and no strikes. Crowded a little bit, fouls it off, one and one to Maurice. The Rangers will have uh, Jeff Hewson, Gary Pettis, and Dean Palmer scheduled up in the ninth. Toward short, Hewson with the play. And a one, two, three inning for Jeff Coat. We go to the ninth with the Red Sox leading 11 to 6. Top of the ninth, the Red Sox leading 11 to 6 and changes defensively for Boston. Kevin Romine has taken over left field. Romine in left. And batting, if he ever would bat again, in Vaughn's place. And on first, Carlos Quintana moving in from left field to play first base. Rangers down by five runs. Have 11 hits in the game. Jeff Houston is up. Came in to play shortstop in the seventh inning. Getting his first at bat. Jeff Reardon, just in case, is warming in the bullpen. There's a slam for a base hit over short. The Rangers have had as many hits as the Red Sox have. Twelve. Four. I think for that one inning by Quintana, or six RBIs by Quintana, because That's the Rangers it. themselves, all we do with the 12 hits, as you mentioned, Ed, six runs. Even on a day where they appear to be being blown out of a ball game, they've still been able to put up some offensive numbers. 
Well, we're th thinking of an inning ago. If Petrali hit a home run, it would be a two-run game now. And you don't. <laughs> if you're a Red Sox fan, you don't like to think of those things. On a game, on a day, it looks as if everything's gone very well after the ten-run inning. Eleven to six. The hits are even at twelve. The batter is Gary Pettis. He has struck out twice. One ball and one strike to the center fielder. Up and in. Two and one. The crowd, 33,086 this afternoon. Weekday afternoon, 1 o'clock game, 33,000 plus. A lot have disappeared. Two and two. Red Sox leading 11 to six. In the top of the ninth, nobody out. Runner at first. Two two count to Pettis. Three and two. Lamp has given up two runs and four hits. Three two pitch runner breaks and a foul. Houston going on the three two. Might as well nobody's holding on at first base. Quintana playing well behind the runner and the only reason to get double up there is if there's some kind of line drive to the infield. Even though there's a chance a good chance that Pettis can strike out if you have that much of a break and a jump why well, you should be get getting into second base easily on the strikeout. Not even be a throw. He goes again and Pettis swings and it fouls again. Seen that happen a few times too. They'll send that runner to try to stay away from a double play and then all of a sudden boom there's a line drive to <laughs> one of the infielders and <laughs> get the DP anyway. Jeff Houston at first looking over to his third base coach Dave Oliver for some sort of sign. He went twice and kind of shrugging his shoulders last time. He goes again and Pettis grounds to first. And he'll be put out by Quintana. One away and Houston at second. Well, that might have turned into a double play had he been not running on the pitch. Well, that's one of the most difficult double plays to turn. First to shortstop, back to either the pitcher or the first baseman. Dean Palmer. At the plate now he's had two hits a double and a single he's two for four. Foul strike one Palmer started the game in left came in to play third for an inning or two and went back to left field. Nice right, so little souvenir for a young man down in the first row. I think his dad helped him by reaching over the rail. Palmer strike two. But they can't believe kids when they get these balls the foul balls how dark the balls are from being rubbed up yeah. before you use this thick of a major league baseball nice bright shiny white ball and you get one you say what is this <laughs> even after it had only been fouled the first time hadn't hit dirt two strike pitch and waved at by Palmer as Lamps drops down to strike him out. That's the fourth strikeout for Dennis Lamp. Now there's one out to go. And the second time he's got Palmer in this game, both times with the same pitch, the slider down and away. Out of the strike zone, but a swing and a futile swing by Palmer. And the Rangers are down to their last out. Mike Stanley is up with a single and a double. Ball one. Right, 
Down to shortstop and Rivera to first for the final. So the Red Sox snap a four game losing streak and split the series with the Texas Rangers. It took a 10 run inning to do it. They did not score a run after that but they won it with a big inning and a big day for Carlos Quintana. The mobile extra mile play of the game Carlos Quintana's grand slam home run back in the third inning after oil can Boyd had walked three men in a row. Quintana steps to the plate and delivers his first career grand slam and also his first home run this year at Fenway Park exactly one year to the day was the last time Quintana hit a home run it here at Fenway. Go along with that a couple more RBIs later in the game six on a day for the big Q mobile goes the extra mile for you. So it's a Fenway afternoon for the Red Sox and even so for the Texas Rangers who also had 12 hits but got beaten as Quintana did the job. He was the difference with six RBIs in one inning to equal a major league record. Final score the Red Sox 11 and the Rangers 6.